Hi everybody, my name is Justin Stoney and I'm the founder of New York Vocal Coaching here in New York City. Welcome to episode 15 of Voice Lessons to the World, the show where we want to answer your questions about singing from all over the world. I'll give you a chance to ask questions later, but our question for the week comes from Bulacan, Philippines, and Coach Fatrick Sta Anna. He's the founder of Pop Stage, and he asked me to give the website, so it's right here, uh, Pop Stage. It looks like these guys are doing some great things, but Coach Fatrick asks, Dear Justin, what is the difference between pop singing and classical singing? That's an awesome question, Fatrick, and I know that uh, lots of you want to do multiple styles, and I really encourage that. I really encourage you to not just get locked into one, but give your vocal cords variety. Do a lot of different things. So today we're going to talk about the differences between pop and classical. The very first one is simply volume. Classical singing is just louder than pop singing. And now that doesn't mean to be loud. But when you're singing classically, you don't use a microphone, and when you sing with pop, you do use a microphone. And so you want to know that as, as you're developing your voice, that when you're going to sing with the elements of classical, part of the purpose is to project the voice and be able to sing without a mic and to be able to sing over an orchestra and in a large uh, hall. With pop singing, we purposefully do not want the voice to be so big because the mic's going to be very close. If you sing too big, you're probably not going to have the agility and the dexterity and the lightness that we need. So classical singers, be sure that you're singing, as they say, on the body, with a lot of connection to the body, with a lot of great breath support, a lot of physical energy, and a voice that can carry. We never want to push, we never want to be loud, but we want to set up uh, mechanics that will cause good healthy projection. We'll talk about one of those in a second. Pop singers purposefully do not make your voice so loud. If you're singing pop loudly, like I say, you're probably going to prevent the growth that we want as far as agility and lightness and dexterity that we need for pop singing. So that's the first difference. Now one of those mechanical differences with vocal technique is the larynx. Now we talked about this in the past, but we'll do it again. Uh, Classical singers sing with a lower larynx. Pop singers sing with a higher larynx. Um, there's gradations of laryngeal coordinations that you can do. But I'd like to take a song here that could be in a pop setting or a classical setting, America the Beautiful, and just show you what these larynxes uh, sound like. So if I have a little bit of a lower larynx, I have Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of rain. And if I lift up my larynx and get in a little bit of a lighter place with it. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of rain. And I get a little bit more into a pop sound. So part of the thing that allows for more projection is that lower larynx. With a lower, deeper sound, I can make a bigger sound than with the higher, lighter sound uh, that I have with a high larynx. So part of what causes the projection and the volume difference is your laryngeal position. Again, we want to feel a sense of a little drop and a little openness in the throat for your low larynx and a little bit of a lighter higher, not squeeze, but higher laryngeal position for pop. So then the next thing is sort of similar to that. It's the conversationalness of contemporary sounds. Classical singers do not put on the pedestal as much the conversationalness of their sound. So in other words, if I want to have tone quality be my, my number one focus, I might pronounce the words, Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of gray. And then I get, of course, Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain. But if I speak it very conversationally, For purple mountain's majesty, above the fruited plain, for purple mountains majesty above the fruited plain. It sounds more like me and it sounds more uh, with the emphasis being on the lyrics and on the communication. So 
pop and contemporary, we hear the words more clearly often because the focus is on the conversationalness of the tone versus the richness and fullness and the depth of the tone that you get in classical. Now, a fourth thing is going to be stylistic elements. Uh, classical singers do uh, at least two uh, very distinct things, lots of vibrato and lots of legato. Legato means smoothness. So if I have a lot of vibrato and legato, it's this. America, America, God shed his grace on thee. You can see that I'm being very smooth through there, and I also have the, that shimmer of vibrato. Now, a pop singer might not ha have as much of that. They might have <clears throat> America, America, God shed his grace on thee. It might not be, that's straight tone, might not be any vibrato at all, and it might not be so smooth and legato. I'm being a little bit more choppy there. Now, again, both styles can use legato, staccato, vibrato, uh, if they want, but they tend more toward vibrato and legato in classical and toward choppy, staccato, and straight tone in pop. Now, another thing that I can do is throw in riffs. Uh, a pop singer would do that more than a classical singer, although classical singers do have cadenzas, which is sort of a classical riffing. But if I have this again, it's America, America, God shed his grace on thee. I'm throwing in just a little bit of riffs there to kind of bring it into a pop style. So riffs are another thing that a pop singer might do that a classical singer might not. Um, and then finally, uh, breathiness and vocal fry tend to sound very good in pop, but not so much in classical. Breathiness is this sound, and a vocal fry is this sound. So if I go back and do my pop, America, America, God shed his grace on thee. I have ha ah, and uh, in my sound, and it brings me into a pop style. Because I'm not loud, because I'm not forcing a lot of air or volume, that's not bad for my vocal cords. So again, the purity of the classical sound. America, America, God shed his grace on thee. I don't have any of those elements, but I have a lot of other great elements uh, alongside. So I hope that's some good clear differences for you guys as you're working to get both a classical sound and a pop sound together. Again, we've got the volume issue. We've got our laryngeal coordination. Where are we going to feel the depth or the raise or the neutrality of our larynx? We've got the conversational style of pop versus the focus on tone quality and richness uh, of the musical line in classical. And then we've got those stylistic elements that we talked about, vibrato, legato, staccato, vocal riffs, fries, breathiness, there's a lot of stuff that you can play with. So, Fatrique, that was a great question. Once again, that website for you for Pop Stage. Looks like these guys are doing some great stuff out there in the Philippines. So, we wish you the best uh, and helping singers. That's totally awesome. Um, and if you guys have questions for us to answer on the show, you can send an email to questions at voicelessonstotheworld.com. So we just encourage you to study a lot of different styles of singing from pop to classical. And as you do, don't lose the joy, don't lose the passion. Don't let people tell you you can't sing because we know that that's not true. Get with a great voice teacher like Patrick out there in the Philippines and pop stage. If you guys are in New York City, you can check us out at www.newyorkvocalcoaching.com. And if you like these videos, you can visit www.voicelessonstotheworld.com. I'm Justin Stoney. We'll see you next time.